Hi, I'm Lauren Bregitzer, the audio professor and Ableton certified trainer, and I'm here to show you how to use effects racks in Ableton Live. All right, so to start off with, I'm gonna grab this uh, sample that I have right here, drop it in the track. And so what I wanna do is I wanna create an effect that you know I can turn down that both filters the high frequencies out and also compresses it so it makes it bigger. So I can do that inside of an effects rack and I can attach that, that to one knob. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab um, an audio effects rack, let's grab audio effects, I should say. Um, I want EQ, I'm just gonna go for the auto filter. That's great for this type of thing. And so what I wanna do is be able to take this filter frequency knob here and bring it down. Let's hear how far I wanna bring it down. Watch the clip. Maybe somewhere down to that 750 mark. So a couple different ways I can go about making uh, audio effects rack. I can just grab a blank one from the effects area under utilities and then drop it in there. But the easiest way to do is just to select that device. And if you have multiple devices that you want inside that effects rack, you can do that all at once here as well. But I'm gonna click select that and I'm gonna go to create and, or edit I should say, and go to group. So Command G on a Mac, and that puts that inside of groups, which basically puts the way it looks now is inside another device. And I can click on this button, and that brings up these macros. So I can attach that filter frequency to that macro. So if I right click, I can attach it to mac map it to macro one. I'm gonna turn that frequency down from the macro knob in the effects rack. Now I want to make it easier on myself for automating purposes. I want to be able to go, I want the full throw all the way down to the bottom to be 750 Hertz. So I click on this map button in the macro that brings up this macro mappings here. And it shows that the maximum goes up to 19.9 K and the bottom is 26 Hertz. I want to make that bottom 750 Hertz. So I'm going to just click on that and type in 750, hit okay. So when I click on this map button to unmap it again, the bottom of that knob is 750 Hertz. So now I can use the full range of that knob to get the exact range that I want to attenuate on this drum loop. That sounds awesome. So what I wanna do now is I wanna compress it. So I'm gonna grab, uh, go back to audio effects and go to dynamics and just grab the compressor, just the regular compressor and make sure to drop it, not here, but you wanna put it inside this device because I wanna be able to map it to that same macro. So if I drop it outside, I can just click on it and drag it inside of that device and I have that compressor. So now I wanna crank the ratio all the way up. Uh, fast attack, fast release. I wanna really squish it when, it when I attenuate it down. So um, when it's down here at the bottom, you know, it's gonna be super crushed. That was loud. All right. So I want that distorted sound to go with the, the attenuation. So what I do is I want to attach this dry wet knob to that same macro. So I can have one single knob that I can automate or perform live with a controller that attaches that one single knob. So I can attach that dry wet percentage to that knob. But the problem is I can just right click and I can say map it and it's labeled as frequency now. Well, I select that now, it's just gonna call it back to macro one because there's two parameters attached to it. So what I can do here is uh, notice that my percentage is backwards. I want the knob to be at a, the compressor to be 100% wet all the way at the bottom and 0% all the way up at the top. So what I, want, what I need to do is click on map and you can see the range is zero to 100. I can type in 100 to zero if I want to, or I could just right click inside that and select invert range and that's gonna flip that. So now I click that map button. You can see the, the, when, the, when the macro knob is all the way to the left, it sets to 100%. It's all the way to the right, it's at 0%. So now I have a performable compressor and filter on this drum loop that sounds something like this. And that I see, I think I like a lot better. So one thing that I'm gonna do is rename this macro. I'm just gonna rename it. We'll call it um, drum cut. 
and now in Ableton Live 11, I can control the number of macros. We have up to 16 now, but I can bring it down. If I just have one knob, I can just bring that number of macros down to just one knob. So I don't have to look at one knob. So now if I want to go in and automate this drum cut, I'm going to click on this. I just double click in this loop, click on the envelopes tab, and I have that drum cut selected on that, that drum cut macro selected. So now I can just drop in, you know, automation points. Bring it down, bring it up. And then I can just bring it all the way down. So it cuts for two bars and it goes back up for two bars. And I can also attach it to a MIDI controller and use that for live performance if I'm DJing or something like that. So that's how you do how you the purpose of creating macros and effects racks in Ableton Live. There's obviously a lot more you can do with them. I mean, you're only limited by your imagination because you can have up to 16 tracks or 16 macros in Ableton Live 11. And these can all be attached to as many different devices in that effects rack as your computer can handle or you want to fit in there. So hopefully this helps make effects racks a little easier to understand. They're not that crazy, but they're one of my favorite aspects of Ableton Live. So dive in and have fun with this and uh, start making some great music.